Episode of Albums I Seriously Love, the second and possibly last. Today I'm going to talk to you about a band I seriously care about, Dillinger 4. This is going to be good. Yeah. I listened to all these albums around 2007, 2008, somewhere in there. They were very, very big influences on me. I feel like Versus God is a little bit better at loud volumes. I listen to them a lot in my car. And I appreciate the production on all the Dillinger 4 records. Midwestern Songs of the Americas has a couple really challenging things. The sound clips are hilarious, but the one with the violins, that's challenging and that's exciting. And I love things like that. I mean, I really, really do, especially when the drums come in and the feedback. And I mean, it's really a neat thing to experience, especially once you're used to it. But this is the one that got me hooked probably because it has the least of that. Versus God worked best with my attention span, and I grew into the other ones. Something I really love about this album, the last two songs, the last three, all the songs, but the last two, Dillinger 4 is kind of famous for their July 4th party, the Dillinger 4th of July. This last year, 2015, was the biggest one yet. And I didn't go, but I did see them in the past. Andy Nelson and I piled into the 1992 Ford Tempo. It was red with maroon interior. Fresh out of high school, we drove through the hot summer sun. My left arm became sunburned. The drive was vaguely terrifying. We approached the city. I parked my car in a decent neighborhood. We locked the doors. We walked to the venue. Eclipse Records. We looked at the records. We played the arcade games. We saw the bands perform. The Mannix. Dillinger 4. 86th. Off with their heads. It was a radical time. Ryan was also there. We had lunch at a small diner near the venue that I have since forgotten the name of. HR from the Bad Brains was there, in our hearts. This was the day we witnessed the all-ages equivalent to the Dillinger 4th of July, on the 3rd of July. Patty talked about roller skates, puppy dogs, and chocolate cake, among other things I have since forgotten. The venue is small with concrete walls, several deafening cranked Marshall half stacks made for a noisy, rowdy time. There were 30 or 40 people there at most. The lack of bodies made for some disturbingly intense audio ricochet. My recollection fades and I return to a 2015 reality. I drive an HHR now. It's charcoal, like Mark's Honda Fit. The live shows had some pretty crazy madness. The photograph on the back of the LP is the dead truth. So Dillinger 4 is kind of known for having a nearly perfect discography. They've never made an album that wasn't well received by fans and critics alike. Versus God. So anyways, album art. Let's talk about that. Obviously, you've got a guy suiting up some boxing gloves. Is Dillinger 4 readying to face off with the fellow upstairs? I think that's what's implied. But I don't need to sit around and spell out their jokes. I mean, that is funny. The thing is, people don't think about stuff like this, or at least they don't talk about it. And if they do talk about it, they don't talk to me about it. And I talk a lot about albums, so I'm surprised that album art interpretation doesn't come up more than it does. And I think this is probably my favorite art of theirs, maybe besides Civil War or Situationist Comedy. This. Feast your eyes on this. And this is actually a pretty cool little amp. I've uh, kind of always wanted one of those little solid state marshals. I think ZZ Top recorded an album with something like one of those little things. I don't remember. Something weird. Somebody correct me. Email me. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about amps. I seriously love all of these albums. The Pinhead Gunpowder Split with Dillinger 4 is probably my favorite 7-inch ever made. And then there's the, uh, the one where he talks about HR from the Bad Brains. From the soul brains. Patty can really talk about something when, oh man, HR. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Dillinger 4 still performs live and you can still buy their albums. I'll Let's show you how to get them in a minute. You know, at one point, I think I heard Patty say something about wanting to release a second collection album called Balls Deep in Hoopla. Balls Deep in Hoopla. That is. That is Dillinger 4 to me. They should definitely do it. So somewhere in my compilation CD collection, which were all urinated on by my dog, there's a CD called No Hold Back, All Attack. It's a bunch of Twin Cities hardcore and punk bands. Dillinger 4 referred to themselves as the Dillinger Memorial Ganja Groove Wagon, if I'm not mistaken. The Dillinger Memorial Ganja Groove Wagon. The Dillinger Memorial Ganja Groove Wagon. Dillinger Memorial Ganja Groove Wagon! Morty! I can 
Let's see my headphones from here. In conclusion, this is one of the smartest, funnest albums I've ever heard, and it holds a butt ton of personal significance. It holds a butt ton of personal significance. That sounds like it could be a Dillinger Force song title. Some of these song titles are pretty cool. Maximum Piss and Vinegar. Get your study hall out of my recess. Who didn't kill Bambi? Define learning disorder. How many punks does it take to change a light bulb? Wreck the place, fantastic. All right, let's do a regrettable cover of how many punks does it take to change a light bulb. Check that writing on the wall. It's And it was you and me against the world, but we were all oh, out of their hands. <laughs> like and subscribe, just listen to the real album, because this is just getting dumb. Oh, Bye. See you later.